14. We're now in a part of the Gospel that's called the Final Discourse. And there are indicators that at one point, this was chapters 13 and 14, were the original discourse. If you'd like to have a look at the end of chapter 14, we get this phrase. Jesus says, Arise, let us go. Now if you look what happens next in your text, you've got chapter 15, chapter 16, chapter 17. Now, what are you imagining? Are they walking along and Jesus is talking to them? No. But if you go from the end of chapter 14 to the beginning of chapter 18, it reads like this. Arise, let us go. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples across the Kedron. That led scholars to suggest that the original discourse ended at chapter 14. It's like his first draft. Then, a couple of years later, perhaps a new situation in the community, or he discovered they needed further explanation, the other chapters were added by the same author and as part of the gospel. But we could, he couldn't do cut and paste. So he's got manuscript. So you don't cut and paste, you leave what you've already written and you just add the next couple of pages. So chapter 13 and 14 go together. Usually when I teach in a narrative way, usually I do chapter 13 first, the foot washing, and then 14. But I think you can understand the foot washing better if you do 14 first. Okay. Have a look what your text says. It might say many rooms. Some texts even say many mansions. All of which are very bad. The text, the closest we can get, in my father's house there are many dwellings. Not even dwelling places, just dwellings. It's based on a Greek verb, meno, which means to dwell. Let's have a look at what the text says. And the key word is that word dwell. Menno. We have in this phrase, in my father's house, a repetition of the words used in John 2. And in John 2, the phrase meant the temple. So as we hear it here, we've got to carry with us that this phrase is something about the temple as well. So hang on to those two meanings. My father's house in chapter 2 meant the temple. What I'm going to do now is look at all the places in chapter 14 where the verb to dwell is used. Now again, this is a, sometimes in your Gospels, they don't consistently translate the verb meno as well. Sometimes they use live or remain, and so you do not get the sense of the repetition of this verb, to dwell. What are the many dwellings in my Father's house? Well, here's the first one. If you have a look at John 14, 10, and look at what your text says. Some texts at this point say the Father who lives, or is in me, but the Father who dwells in me. Look at the next phrase, John 14, 17. Talking about the Holy Spirit. Paraclete, the Spirit of Truth. Look at what your text says. It's not a wrong translation, but when the one word is used, it would be better for consistency to keep translating it as well. Because when you have dwell one minute, abides another minute, you lose the sense that it's only one word. So here again, we've got the Spirit who dwells 
with you and will be in you. Here's another phrase, chapter 14, verse 23, talks about we, the Father and Jesus. Many texts at this point say make our home, but again, it's the Greek verb meno, we'll make our dwelling with you. And finally, verse 25, while still with you, okay, those are all other ways of translators translating the one Greek verb. Now, if you look at those four phrases, and we have a look at the screen and see what we've got. The one word, dwell. The Father who dwells with me. The Spirit of truth who dwells with you. We, the Father and Jesus, will come and make our dwelling with you. I've said these things to you while dwelling with you. Here's a question. What's the verb? Well, what's the subject of the verb? Who's doing the dwelling? This whole chapter is about God coming to dwell with believers. And the text says, in my Father's house are many dwellings. And then throughout chapter 14, we get what those dwellings are. It's the dwelling of the Father, the dwelling of the Spirit, the dwelling of Jesus with and in believers. It's just the words and the grammar. So it's a movement, if you like, to think of it as a movement of God coming to dwell in us. Now, another little bit. This phrase, God, Father, Spirit, Jesus, dwelling in and with the believer. The phrase, my Father's house. Chapter 2 is meant for temple. If you were to look up my Father's house in a concordance, how it's used in the Old Testament, it always refers to people. It always refers to the members of a household. In fact, your Bible possibly just simply writes the family. But the Old Testament Hebrew does not have a word for family. It says, my father's house. I'll show you a couple of places. So Joseph said to his brothers, and to his father's house. He's talking to the people. I will go and tell Pharaoh, and we will say to him, my brothers and my father's house have come, who were in the land of Canaan, have come to me. The father's house are the people who make up the household. Another passage, Joshua. This is Rahab who helped the spies come into the land who helped them get over the wall of Jericho. And Rahab says, Now then, swear to me by the Lord, that as I have dealt kindly with you, you will deal kindly with my father's house. Now she's not asking them to look after it. She's talking about the people, and she names them. Give me a sure sign and save a life. My father, my mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them. So the phrase, my father's house, now we have to read with two meanings. It means the household, the people, and it carries also the sense of temple. This is how John works, superimposing one image on another, household, temple. Chapter 14 in this phrase, in my father's house. We're talking here about a series of divine indwellings, God dwelling in us. The Father, the Son, the Spirit. And what that does is it makes us now the house of God. It makes us the place where God dwells. Now the word for that, of course, is the temple. So believers will be temple people. And we are now part of the household of God. 
both meanings. We are both the dwelling place of God, Father, Son, and Spirit. So we can rightly talk about the believers as a temple. Paul did. This is John's way of doing it. And we're part of the household 